Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Continuing on with our Super Bowl talk here, specifically getting more so into, of course, the champion Kansas City Chiefs. This is, of course, as we talked about in the first segment, first repeat champions since the 2003-04 Patriots and the fourth franchise to ever win three Super Bowls in five seasons. That list also consists of the Steelers in the mid to late 70s, the Cowboys winning three and four years from 1992 to 1995, and then the Patriots with the three and four from 2001 to 2004. The Steelers actually won four in six years. But again, these are what we look at as the dynasties. Now, I know the Cowboys had a couple other ones in there, same with the Steelers as well. The Patriots is a little interesting because they were more so going 10 years without anything and then coming back around in that mid to late 2010s and rattling off another three. So it was the total of six in that 15, 20 year span. But, you know, I think that this does put the Chiefs at a different level of officially becoming a dynasty. In my opinion, I have three really being the number in what exact amount of years I feel like is a little bit up for debate, but I think that it starts with around a decade. And now I know everybody has different definitions for what it takes to be a dynasty. The ringers, Bill Simmons, he talks about how for his definition of a dynasty, it usually has to be dominating within the span of about a decade. So again, I'd be curious to his definition, whether or not that includes if it's just three and 10, or if that's almost not enough, because to me, a dynasty is pure domination in a period of time where you are sort of boxing out, locking out other greats from winning the title. That's what we saw Famously, of course, with Michael Jordan and the Bulls, the number of stars that played in that same era in the 80s, and it wasn't until he briefly retired where at least one other great in that era in Hakeem Olajuwon was able to win a couple rings and sort of solidify himself as one of the greatest of all times. But Michael Jordan is literally the reason that we talk about guys like Charles Barkley, or those jazz teams with Malone and Stockton, the Sonics team at the time, and Gary Payton, and all these other, you know, Hall of Fame players, but they weren't able to reach the top of the top because of, and I know that it wasn't just Michael, it was the Bulls dynasty, but, you know, even more so playing to my point, it is a team thing, and that's just the reality of the situation then. Tom Brady held back a bunch of players in his era. And then more recently with the Warriors and these Western Conference teams, some of the greats, the Thunder teams that had the 3-1 lead against them in the Western Conference Finals that they came back from um, with Russ and KD. And then the really good Rockets teams too with a different couple iterations of Harden and whatever co-star you want to throw in there. The best form of them was with him and Chris Paul. But, you know, that's sort of what a dynasty does, is it pushes down these other groups of all-time great players and all-time great teams to a lower level than them because they are so dominant. And that's what we're currently seeing with Mahomes and the other QBs in the AFC, where... We're going to have a little bit of reservations with Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and whoever else is trying to rival for the, at this point, again, the top quarterback in the league alone is sort of a title that I think Mahomes is going to be holding himself for a long period of time now, but now there's not even really an argument to be made and not just that, but do these other players have it in them to be a Super Bowl caliber quarterback? It's tougher to prove that you are 
when you're going up against the generational dynasty that is currently the Kansas City Chiefs. So in my mind, I think it's no doubt, yes, they are. They, If you think about, too, the way that they have sort of shaped the NFL, the the roster construction, the schematic differences that defenses, defenses have sort of adopted over time since Mahomes and the Chiefs have been so dominant. I mean, there was a time period there early in the Chiefs days where they had Tyreek Hill and they would just demolish you with over-the-top deep plays. You had the speed of Tyreek and the arm of Patrick Mahomes and it was just deep balls and deep balls and deep balls. And then all of a sudden, other teams started to replicate that. The Bills did so. And as a result, we saw defenses sort of adjust to this new era led by Patrick Mahomes, similar to Curry in the three-point shooting of that Warriors dynasty where they started playing two safeties back more. And it was forcing teams to more so go methodical drives up the field and obviously not every team has a Patrick Mahomes to be able to throw it over the top like that so it maybe didn't apply to every single game but in a sense it affected every single franchise because the way that we evaluate prospects now is the ability a lot of the time to have that deep ball to have some of these Mahomes characteristics why do you think Caleb Williams is such a highly touted draft pick? And I'm not saying it's just there are so many comparisons between him and Mahomes. And I know some people have soured on Caleb Williams a little bit. I was actually at the Super Bowl party I was with the just yesterday. It's funny how people it's this is a quick Caleb Williams tangent. And then I will get off it entirely and move on because I'm sure we'll be doing tons of him over the next couple months. But just the way that people are so out on him because he cried after a game and because he made that comment, lions don't listen to the opinions of sheep or whatever. And, you know, I just, I think that it's all so ridiculous that people are saying he's a guaranteed bust. That's like what I've heard multiple times now. I just think that it's so crazy, but it's not the point. I started talking about him because he has Mahomes characteristics that makes him a very appealing prospect. It's being able to have the arm talent, but also the athleticism outside of the pocket, which is another thing that obviously we've seen Mahomes, especially as time has gone on, sort of rely on his legs less and less. But anytime he needs to pull it, he does. We saw the scramble out that he had. This was in the fourth quarter to pick up a first down. And then the very next play, they ran a read option. Bosa comes flying off the right edge and he pulls it for 22 yards himself. Like he has this running ability and just overall talent that everybody in the NFL wants to replicate. And, you know, it's just so interesting. I feel like the sort of dynamics that go on across the league as a result of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense doing what they've done. Now, We've since seen the Chiefs sort of similar to the conversation about Mahomes using his legs, but we've seen the Chiefs adjust from they're not just a deep ball threat type of team, and part of that's the maturation of Mahomes in the pocket being able to put together these drives, and I forget who it was. It was somebody last night, I think, on either NFL Network or on CBS, but somebody has made the point that we have so much internal arguments as football fans about this whole game manager idea and the negative connotations that come to it. But part of what has made Mahomes that much better is the fact that he has been able to sort of develop as a game manager and just take what the defense is giving you. And that's what we saw on the drive for the field goal at the end of regulation you saw him the defense was sitting back I'm just going to pick up chunk play by chunk play going to his various tight ends and working his way up the field then you get Kelsey who breaks one open and you can still rely on your arm talent and the the corner throw that he had to I forget which one of the tight ends it was on the play it was either 
Watson or Gray, but it was a great throw. So he still has the arm talent to make these difficult passes, but he's sort of settled into his own also as a just game manager in sorts, of course, with the ceiling of being that game changer, if we want to get into the terminology that's frequently used here. But I think that in the next segment, we're going to be talking about the Chiefs going forward. So, you know, we'll get more into it as it is. But this is just sort of an example of this is probably just about. And we'll see, obviously, because it requires the Chiefs drafting well and still building up their roster well. They've done a pretty good job up to this point these past couple years. Obviously good enough to win back-to-back Super Bowls. But this is probably just about as bad as the receiver situation is going to get for Mahomes and the Chiefs. Because we saw them sort of have to take on this different identity this year where it was more defensive based and you know they're going to have some decisions to make with that defense but they were able to rely on that so much more heavily that they were trying to incorporate the run game more and Pacheco's been very good for them when he can stay healthy and you know you have Rice coming along during the course of the season and I thought that overall he was fine in the Super Bowl but it's not like they had any players that were really fully changing the game like that and yes you have Travis Kelsey who was again very quiet first half but at least was able to you know make the big plays in the second half which is what we see him do I you know it obviously seemed like it helped some not that Greenlaw was the primary matchup for Kelsey throughout the course of the game But once it was Greenlaw going down, it was a lot more of that Burks from the 49ers. I'm blanking on his first name right now. But once they got that backup linebacker in, they were looking to attack more and they were able to take advantage more. So it was Oren Burks for the 49ers. You know, it's just sort of the strategic thing of, you know, Mahomes understanding the matchups and all that and you know I don't know too much about Burks as a player himself but again it's just understanding the moment there and Kelsey was able to capitalize on that he finishes the game with after I think it was only one catch or something like that in the first half finishes with nine catches for 93 yards and again it's not like any of the other receiver threats were even really all too impactful for them but they were good enough, and I think that this is, again, probably one of the worst receiving core groups we'll see with the Kansas City Chiefs under Patrick Mahomes. I just, you know, I think that from here, they're only going to get better. Now, again, that's maybe a big assumption, but I think that, you know, what makes this run so impressive the from when Mahomes first started with the Chiefs to now is, again, just these different identities that they've been able to be malleable and be able to, to pick up different things and play different styles that best suits them going forward. And, you know, I think that this was one of the more difficult paths for them during this run is because it was a little bit less Patrick Mahomes reliant. You can argue it was more because of the lack of surrounding talent, but I felt like this year was a lot more about the defense and sort of having that identity and having Mahomes make the big plays when they need. And I know it didn't go great during some of the regular season, but in the biggest moments, it is the biggest star Patrick Mahomes that makes the plays he's done so in three technically they were off last week but three straight playoff games I should say as opposed to weeks and you know I it's hard as a Patriots fan to sort of root for a guy that is coming for my favorite players legacy in terms of being the greatest of all time but I mean he is just so incredibly fun to watch and I know that you don't like the Chiefs, they're the villains, but 
you know, they are a dynasty now. They are greatness, and other teams should be sort of studying what they do, do here. I know it's not as easy as just getting a Patrick Mahomes, but I do think that there are other sort of supplemental lessons that you can pick up as far as flexibility and re reinventing yourself when need be in the moment that the Chiefs were able to do through these two Super Bowls. So we are going to take a break here. When we come back on the other end, we're going to be getting into what is next for the Chiefs. How does this look going forward more so in depth? So stick with us. We will be right back. <laughs> 